Hey friends, I'm glad that we get to have a junior church lesson today. We have been talking about seeking and finding, and we're going to do a really special activity with that today. I'm going to go all around campus on our golf cart, and we're going to find letters that spell out a super important word that we're going to be focusing on today. So come on, let's go. all the letters, let's see if we can put them in the right order to figure out what we're going to be learning about in junior church today. Here they are. Hmm, I think I know what word it's going to spell. Let's see if I can get this. not the right word. Do you know what it's supposed to be? Let me see if I can fix this. We go I think that's much better here we have Easter I love Easter so much and the beautiful thing about Easter isn't that we get to search for eggs or we hear about the Easter Bunny the beautiful thing about Easter is that it's all about Jesus and his love for us we learn that he died on the cross for our sins and rose again from the grave so that we could have our sins forgiven and have a personal relationship with Jesus, the one who made the whole world and loves us so much. Let's talk about that today. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Please help have everybody here. Thank you that you are strong and powerful. Please help everybody through this coronavirus. Help everybody while they're watching this video. And please help them to learn something new that they have not learned. Amen.
happy Sunday, friends, and today is a special Sunday called Palm Sunday, and we're going to be learning more about that today, but I'm going to read you a little um, part of one of our Easter books that's about Palm Sunday. Jesus traveled to Jerusalem 70 miles at least. His friends came along to help him celebrate the Passover feast. As Jesus got closer to town, what in the world did he see? The people had covered the road with palm branches from a tree. And he rode on his donkey. He came in the name of the Lord. When Jesus made this humble entrance, the crowd cheered and roared. The people had heard of his miracles. They longed to hear what he'd say. They waited with excitement. Their clothing paved his way. The people shouted, Hosanna! They cried, please save us now. They wanted him to be their king. They all knelt down and bowed. On Palm Sunday, remember our Lord Jesus is the King. Praise him for all his goodness and the hope he always brings. So we want you to sing with us. If you have a palm branch laying around, or if you want to go cut one from your yard really quickly like we did, you can do that, or you can do the hand motions like I'm going to do. All right. Sunday morning to be singing praises to our God. You know, today is a very special Sunday. One week before Easter, we call this Palm Sunday. Miss Robin already mentioned a little bit about that. This is a Sunday where Jesus was traveling into Jerusalem, riding on a donkey, and people came around him singing praises, waving palm branches, that's why we call it Palm Sunday, and throwing down their coats and their jackets and their clothes in the road for him to make a way. It was like a big parade for Jesus, King Jesus. They were celebrating, shouting, Hosanna. This is the one who's coming in the name of the Lord, celebrating that Jesus was the one who would come to rescue everybody. That's worth praising him, isn't it? Absolutely. Well, we want to praise him too. You've already been singing, but we've included a little project that you can do. If you got one of our paper packets, it's in there. Or if not, you can download this online. One of the pages we gave you is a palm leaf. So you can make your own palm branch if you want. You can color it. Here's mine. You color it and cut it out, or you could just do this with a, your own piece of paper. And I cut some little slits in there so that it looks like a palm branch. And then you can wave it to uh, praise Jesus. Now, I put right here on mine something that I'd like to praise God for. I am thankful for God's love. You might want to put that on your palm branch. What are you thankful for? It's a day, great day to praise God, remembering all that he has done for us and thanking Jesus for coming to rescue us. He's really our king. And that's what Palm Sunday is about, a special day to praise God and celebrate him. But you know, we have another story that we're going to be looking at today. Part of the Easter story comes from God's word. And here's what I want us to think about. If you were a king, you'd be pretty important, right? 
they just had this big parade for Jesus. He, it seems like that everyone thought he was important. But you know what? That didn't mean that Jesus didn't have time for people. In fact, that's what we want to learn about today. King Jesus, the Son of God, took time for some very special people. He took time for everyone. There were even people you're going to hear about today that others thought, oh, no way, Jesus, you shouldn't hang out with them. Jesus, you shouldn't take time for them. But he did. That reminds me, here's our big idea for the day. God's grace is big enough for everyone. Can you say that with me? God's grace is big enough for everyone. That's right. It doesn't matter if you're old or young, rich or poor, important or not. God's grace is big enough for you. He loves you and he cares about you. So let's learn about that today. Miss Krista has a great story to share with us. Hi friends, I'm missing you and I am still praying for you. I hope you're having a fun time at home. You may be wondering why I am sitting up in this tree. Well, if you watch our really cool Bible story, I think you'll figure it out. God's story, Zacchaeus. So part of God's story is about Zacchaeus and it begins like this. Once there was a man named Zacchaeus, let's call him Zac, who lived in a town called Jericho. He was short, and he didn't have many friends. In fact, most people hated Zac. That's because he worked as a tax collector. See, back then people paid taxes, just like now. But instead of sending money to the government, there were men in every city whose job was taking tax money from people. Problem is, those men usually lied. Zac like most, took a lot of extra money from a lot of people, and all those people hated him. Anyway, one day Jesus came to Zach's town, and Zach wanted to see him, but so did everybody else. And remember how Zach was really short? Well, he couldn't see Jesus over everybody else's head. So guess what he did? He actually climbed up into a tree to look out over everybody. Now, imagine a grown man climbing up in a tree in the middle of a crowd. People probably thought he was crazy, or weird. But Zach was willing to look weird if it meant getting closer to Jesus. From up in the tree, Zach watched as Jesus walked up. Jesus said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is my day to be a guest in your home. This was kind of like a famous person inviting themselves over, except way better. This invitation would change Zach's life. Zach scrambled down the tree to take Jesus to his house. Maybe he thought Jesus didn't know about all the money he had taken or how everybody hated him. But Jesus did know, and he loved Zach anyways. Other people saw this and they were mad. They said, Jesus has gone into the house of a sinner. They wondered how Jesus could love somebody who had lied and stole their money. The great thing is, Jesus loves all of us, even after we've done things we deserve to get in trouble for, or even after we actually get in trouble. When we see that Jesus loves us anyway, it makes us want to show that kind of love to others. At least that's what happened to Zach. Right away, he wanted to make things right with the people he had hurt. He knew that just saying I'm sorry wasn't enough. So he told Jesus, I'm going to give half of what I have to the poor, and anyone I cheated, I will pay back four times the amount of money I took. When Jesus saw that Zach was willing to accept his love and turn around and show it to others, he said, my friend, today God has rescued you. And even though Zach had been a liar and a thief who was hated by everyone, he became a friend of Jesus and a part of God's family that very day. And that's the story of Zacchaeus. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Zach was short. He was a tax collector. He stole money. People hated him. Jesus came to town. Zach couldn't see him. He climbed a tree. Jesus told him to come down. Jesus went to his house. Jesus loved Zach. Others were mad. Zach made things right. He became a part of God's family. And that's a part of God's story. Friends, wasn't that an amazing story about God's grace and forgiveness? I have a little confession to make. I am not such a good tree climber and I needed a little help to get up here. 
but luckily I know some kids who are excellent tree climbers and they're going to help us with this week's verse. God's grace is now appeared. By His grace, God offers us in all people. Hi, this to a rabbit! Hey, Diggory. Who did she think she is? Sound. I can't believe some people they think her that nose up in the air. Diggory, it sounds like you're in a bad mood today. Wouldn't you be? I just can't stand her. Diggory, tell me what's going on. I, who are you upset at? It's that poodle, that poodle down the road. Mm. A poodle? Well, what about her? She thinks she's all that. Thinks she's better than me because she's a purebred. She's oh. got papers. <laughs> well, Diggory, that... That really doesn't matter. Why is it making you upset? Well, um, you're still, you're still a good friend. But, but I, I thought I was special, but I don't have papers. Oh, Diggory, it's not papers that make you special. You, you know what? You really need to hear our lesson today. We're going to hear about several people who really weren't anything special at all. At least that's what others thought. In fact, some people thought they were just terrible. But did they have papers? Well, no. I mean, they might have. One of them, Zacchaeus, I think he probably had papers that he wrote people's names on. I don't know for sure. He kept track of a lot of money. He was a tax collector and not a very nice guy. He cheated people. Yeah. The other guy, I'm pretty sure he didn't have papers because he was blind. Yeah. And um, the last one was a thief. Whoa. And he was getting punished for it. But they all were nothing special. At least that's what other people thought. In fact, some of them were just downright bad. But they were really special to Jesus. Really? Because they, they don't sound special. What oh. made them special? Well, you see, God loves everybody. You don't need papers to be special to him. You don't have to have a special name or a special position or a lot of money or any of that. You don't have to be somebody important. He just loves people. In fact, that's what we're learning about today. 
God's grace is big enough for everybody, big and small, rich and poor, important or not, with or without papers. Oh, really? Oh, give me just a minute. Hey, hey, down there, did you hear that? I'm oh. special! <laughs> Diggory. Oh, sorry. You, you don't have to have an attitude about it. In fact, we shouldn't, but do remember this. You're always special. Everybody's special to God, and you don't need papers to prove it. He said it in his word, and he loves us all. So I hope that'll make you feel a little bit better. Oh, it does. And it might even help you treat that poodle a little more nicely. Well, I'll try. Yeah, give her a smile. I you know, guess, I guess she's special. She's special too. Not just because of the papers. Not though. because of the papers. You're right. Well, you listen in, and we'll see you next week. All right. Bye, kids. See you next week. Bye-bye. Have you ever felt like you didn't matter or like you just weren't important? Well, we probably have all felt that way. We just said this is a day that we celebrate Jesus as the King. Praise him for that on this Palm Sunday. And we just heard a story about Zacchaeus, someone who Jesus cared about, even though other people didn't like him. Well, you know, Jesus is our King. And that's something special because he always cares about us and invites us to come and talk to him anytime. You know, I have never had a chance to meet a king or a queen or a president, and I probably never will. Even if I did, they'd probably shake my hand and then forget about me the next day. They wouldn't remember. But our king, Jesus, he's not like that at all. He remembers us, he cares about us, and he wants to spend time with us. We, we saw that in the story with Zacchaeus, a guy who everybody hated, but Jesus on purpose went to his house so that Zacchaeus could be saved. Remember, God's grace is big enough for everyone. Well, do you know when Jesus went to Jericho, where Zacchaeus lived, there was someone else there that he took time for. It was a guy named Bartimaeus. That's kind of an interesting name, Bartimaeus. Maybe we could call him Bart. Well, Bart had a problem. He was blind, couldn't see. So he sat by the road, he was a beggar. He wasn't like Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was rich and probably had nice clothes. Bartimaeus didn't. He was a beggar, he was poor. But Jesus had time for him too. As Jesus was coming through the city, he was coming down the road. Bartimaeus started calling out, Jesus, Jesus, won't you come? Won't you help me? Won't you heal me? And people were telling Bartimaeus, oh, shh, shh, just be quiet, don't bother Jesus. He's really important, he has a lot to do. He has places to go, he's busy right now. Please don't bother him, you, you blind beggar. Jesus stopped and he called to Bartimaeus, come. And he touched his eyes and healed him. Jesus has time for everybody. Whether or not anyone else thinks you're important, he does. There's another story that happened just a few days after this. Jesus was at a house of one of his friends. They fixed him a big dinner. They thought they were important people and going to get to spend time with Jesus, right? And in came a lady. She was an awful woman. She had sinned. She, was, she had really lived a terrible life. She was a wicked sinner. And she came to Jesus with some special perfume and poured it on his feet. Everyone else was embarrassed to have this terrible woman at their party. Jesus. He spent time with her and he forgave her of her sins. That's what he does. Everybody matters to Jesus. Remember, his grace is big enough for everyone. In 
fact, Jesus says this, let the little children come to me and do not send them away. You see, his disciples were worried Jesus had more important people to see. No, Jesus loves kids. Did you know that? He loves children and he loves you. He wants to spend time with you and he would remind you, my grace is big enough for you. You're always important enough for me. Jesus loves everyone. His grace is big enough for everybody. Today, we want to hear one more story from God's Word. It's part of the Easter story, and it's going to tell us about another person who everybody else thought shouldn't matter at all. But Jesus once again shows us that he loves everyone and that his grace is big enough for everybody. Are you ready to do another Seek and Find? You'll need to find your paper, but don't look at it yet. If you have that, get it, find it, turn it upside down, and get ready. Because soon we're going to find another series of pictures hidden inside that picture that will help us tell our story. Now, if you didn't get one of these papers in your packet, you can download it from online or your mom or dad can help you with that. If not, just watch on the screen. We'll have the picture on the screen and you can see it there. So are you ready to seek and find? I hope so. Well, here's how the story goes. Jesus had come into Jerusalem. All the people were praising him and shouting Hosanna, waving their palm branches and celebrating him like a king. Now, this made the leaders really, really nervous. The religious leaders were angry because he was getting a lot of attention and he was he was being called the Son of God. That made them upset. They didn't like it at all. They didn't want Jesus to be there. They were angry that people were calling him King. And the Romans were worried about that too. They wanted to be in control of the government, right? And so they're worried about a new king starting up. Who was this King Jesus that was making everybody angry? That's where we're going to start. You'll turn over your page in just a minute, and the first picture you're going to look for is a crown. Did you find the crown? It was a little bit tricky, wasn't it? Kind of small, hiding in there. Well, Jesus really was the king. The Bible says he's the king of kings and lord of lords. But all these people praising him and wanting to call him king made the religious leaders really angry. In fact, the Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 26 that the, the scribes, the Pharisees, these religious leaders, they tried to find him with trickery. Yeah, they were tricky people. With trickery, they were looking to find him and catch him and kill him. Well, they weren't exactly sure where Jesus was during this time, so they needed somebody to help them. And that brings us to our next clue. Are you ready? Get your paper. The timer is going to start in a minute. This time, you're looking for a bunch of coins. Ready? Go.
Who found the coins? Great job. Well, they helped to, to tell us the next part of this story. Now, do you remember last week we talked about Jesus celebrating the Last Supper with his disciples? It reminds us of his body and blood that he gave for us. Well, in that story, Jesus dipped in the bowl with someone, the person he said is who was going to betray him. That was Judas, one of his own disciples. Judas had traveled with Jesus all over the, the land of Israel, just like the rest of the disciples. He'd seen Jesus' miracles. He'd heard Jesus' teaching. He'd spent time with him and eaten many meals with him. But Judas decided to betray Jesus. Remember the priests, the religious leaders? They needed someone on the inside to help them. Judas decided he would be that guy to help them out, to get what they wanted, to be able to catch Jesus and kill him. So after they had celebrated that supper together, Jesus took his disciples to go to a garden to pray. He knew this was going to be a difficult time as he was going to give his life and suffer for us and pay for our sins. So he wanted to spend time with his father. But Judas, he went another way. He went and found the priests and the scribes. He was the guy who kept the money bag for the group. And he went to them and said, I'll tell you where Jesus is. I'll lead you to him, but for a price. 30 silver coins. That was the price of a slave. That's what Judas sold Jesus for. 30 coins of silver. So Judas took the money and he left. He led the leaders into the garden to find Jesus. They brought torches and clubs and spears and soldiers, a big crowd, to catch this one innocent man. They took Jesus and they put him on a trial. They made fun of him, they spit on him, they called him all sorts of awful things, they hit him, they ripped at his beard, he was beaten and whipped, lied about, they called him the King of the Jews, made them angry. But the only crown they gave him was a crown of thorns that they pressed down on his head. The blood ran down his face as he suffered for our sins. He was punished and then they decided, after they put him on a trial, they decided to kill him. The next thing you need to find are three nails. Are you ready? On your mark, get set, go. Those nails were a little bit tricky to find. They remind us of the next part of the story. After Judas led the, the people to Jesus, they captured him, they put him on trial, they found him guilty and accused him of all these things, they decided to kill him. So they took him outside of the city with a cross and nailed him onto that cross. Those big, heavy nails pounded them through his wrists or his hands and his feet to nail him onto that cross. This was a way that they punished awful criminals, thieves and murderers, people like that. Jesus, the King, the Son of God was totally innocent, but they nailed him to the cross to die like a criminal to pay for our sins. That's pretty sobering, it makes us stop and think. 
we should thank Jesus again for all that he's given us. And he did it so that every one of us could have a real relationship with him. Jesus wasn't alone on the cross. There were two thieves being crucified with him. One of those joined along with the crowd who were making fun of Jesus. He laughed at Jesus and he said, If you came to save God's people, then why don't you save yourself and us? The second thief, he reacted differently. The Bible tells us in Luke 23 that he turned to the other and said, Why are you angry at God? Don't you know we're both under this same death sentence of death and we deserve it. We did wrong. But this man is innocent. Then he turned to Jesus and said, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. How do you think Jesus responded to that second thief? Well, that's the next part of the story we want to find, and we're looking for another picture to help us tell the story. So grab your paper or look on the screen and look for one more hidden picture. This time, it's a palm tree. Go! Did you find the palm tree? It reminds us of Jesus' response to that criminal, the second criminal. He asked Jesus that question, Lord, will you remember me? Here was a man about to die. Jesus was, was up there being punished with criminals who deserved to die. And what, were his, what was his response to that man? Today, he said, you will be in paradise with me. That palm tree kind of reminds us of paradise. Sometimes when we think of paradise, we think of a lush, beautiful, tropical place with palm trees or a nice breeze, something lovely, kind of like we have here in Hope Sound, Florida, right? Well, Jesus wasn't promising the man you're going to get to sit under a palm tree, but what he was promising was some, a place that would be beautiful, that would be wonderful and peaceful. Today, Jesus said, you'll be in paradise with me. His response to this man reminds us that God's grace is big enough for everybody. Here was a man who was a sinner, a thief, a man who deserved to die, a man who was a criminal. He didn't have any of his life left to offer to Jesus, but Jesus still loved him and forgave him. Remember, God loves you. And you don't have to do anything special to make him love you more. He loved that thief on the cross and promised him because he was repentant and sorrowful for what he did. He promised him, you get to spend eternity with me. That's God's promise to every one of us. His grace is big enough for everybody. He wants to spend eternity with everyone. Soon after Jesus spoke with that criminal, that other man on the cross, and told him he would get to spend it forever in heaven with him, in paradise, the whole place grew dark.
God gave us an amazing gift when he sent his son Jesus here to earth to die for us on the cross. Let's worship him as we sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. that time of week again kids you know what that means let your neighbors hear it good morning probably sitting there wondering why did you just watch a video of a really really big plane taking off and then landing no this is not that big plane this is just one I picked up so I'd have something to hold right now no that plane let me tell you about that plane that plane is an Airbus 380A let me read you a couple facts about this it's got two decks on it. It can be made to seat up to 800 passengers. 800 for you local kids. The CEC where we have church, that's a packed house. That's a lot of people. They generally, at least, generally on a daily basis will have up to 500 to 600 people on those planes. But when it's fully loaded, listen to this. When that plane is fully loaded, it weighs around this number. This is the number I've got. It weighs 1,238,998 pounds. Did you hear that? Over a million pounds. Do you know how many kids we'd have to stack up to get that? More than we could imagine. So we're talking a plane. I'm just using this as an example, but a plane that weighs a million pounds. And if you saw in the video, you can rewind to see this. 
for that plane, it had two engines on each wings. Those engines, if you were standing next to them, they'd probably seem like pretty big engines, but as you saw in the video, up against the plane, those engines are small. When you look at that plane, it's monstrous, and here's these little engines. And that's what puts that plane up in the air. I don't know about you, but for me, I'm looking at that plane saying, how? It's impossible. In our minds, it is completely impossible that those engines somehow put over a million pounds up into the sky safely. It's mind-blowing, impossible for us to even think about. But it happens. Why? Because somewhere way back there, somebody that knows a whole lot more about these things than we do, knows a whole lot more about flight and about airplanes than we do, designed that plane specially. They designed the shape, the structure of it all. They designed the wings to a certain specification, and they designed those engines with an immense power in them that even though the weight of the plane should be impossible to lift, because the power that is in those engines, they can pick it up and do the seemingly impossible. You're probably asking yourself, why am I talking to you about this monster plane, one of the biggest passenger planes in the world? Why am I talking to you about that when today we're talking about Easter, we're talking about the cross? You know, when we talk about the cross, oftentimes it can be an overwhelming conversation. It can be hard to tackle when we begin to look at our sin. Even for us adults, when we look at our sin and we look at the fact that while we all were born with sin in our lives, we talked about it last week, that Adam and Eve, because of their decision, we have sin. And I hate to tell you this, there's nothing you can do about it. You have dirty sin in your heart and you can't do a thing about it. I can't do a thing about it. We're hearing a lot about washing your hands for 20 seconds and using all sorts of different cleaners and things to stay safe. This disease, this virus that has taken over each and every one of us that's ever walked this earth, you can't wash it off. There's nothing you can do about it. And that can be sad, that can be overwhelming, that can be a weight on our shoulders, kind of like the airplane. What am I going to do? I don't want to do these bad things. I don't want sin to ruin my life. I don't want this weight. But there's nothing I can do about it. It seems impossible. But the cross, the cross connected us back into a power source. Sin made this big gap between us and God. And the cross connected us back in. And when it did, it connected us back into his power. And the Bible says that if you accept that gift, if you ask Jesus into your heart, you're connecting into those engines, if you would. And even though it seems impossible, even though we can't lift that weight ourselves, what Jesus did on the cross connects us into a power source powerful enough to lift that weight of sin off of our shoulders. He made it possible that we can be lifted up. All we have to do is accept it. It doesn't seem possible. We can't do it on our own. But as we're learning today, Jesus' grace, what he gave us there on that cross is bigger than our sin. It doesn't matter whether you feel like you've lived a pretty good life and it's just little sins. Uh, you're still a sinner. You still need to take care of it. Or maybe you're an adult out there watching this video and you feel like you've made a mess of your life. You've made more mistakes than you can ever imagine. It doesn't matter. Jesus said, bring them all to him. And because of what he did on the cross, even when you feel like you can't do anything about it because you can't, he says he can. 
and he will connect you back into his power source and make it possible for you to rise above that sin. All you have to do is be willing to give him the controls of the plane. Say, here you go. And like Pilate, he comes in and he'll check everything to make sure everything's good. He may have to change something. He may have to adjust something here or there to make sure you're running just the way you're supposed to. But when you allow him to have the controls, because of what he did on that cross, the impossible now is possible. The weight can be lifted because his grace is greater than your sin. I invite you this morning, if you haven't accepted that, we've had given you opportunities here in our junior church right here to kneel. But if you haven't, take the time right now. I'm sure your parents would be glad to pray with you right where you're at. Just because you're not here doesn't mean you can't. If you feel like that weight's still on your shoulders, it's just all impossible. Mr. Dan's here this morning to tell you on the authority of the Bible, because the Bible says so, that his grace is bigger than your sin, and he will forgive you if you'll only ask. Give him your heart today if you haven't yet, and we hope you have a wonderful week this week. Oh, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Help Mr. John and Miss Joanna. Even though we can't go to church, they're touching lives for Christ. Help the people building the palm building, the palm house, and help our church families to them not get the coronavirus and the coronavirus not to spread. And help, even though we can't really do anything god's grace is big enough for everyone thank you and thank you for dying on the cross amen god's grace is for everyone that's what we're focusing on today let's say that all together god's grace is for everyone let's learn a verse that focuses on that it's titus 2 11. it goes like this God's grace has now appeared. By his grace, God offers to save all people. Titus 2.11. Let's do some motions with it. God's grace has now appeared. By his grace, God offers to save all people. Titus 2.11. And I'm doing the motion of this for save because it's like someone is rescuing a drowning person. Jesus came to save all of us because he loves us so much. Let's do an activity with this verse so that we can memorize it. So you and someone else in your family can find a tennis ball or a soccer ball or a basketball and you can bounce it back and forth as each of you says a word. But before we do that, let's say the verse another time to make sure we really know it. God's grace has now appeared. By his grace, God offers to save all people. Titus 2.11. Let's do the activity. God's grace has now appeared. By his grace, God offers to save all people. Titus 2, 11. Let's do it again. God's grace has now appeared. By his grace, God offers to save all people. Titus 2, 11. I am so thankful that that verse is true. God's grace is for everyone. He cares about us so much and is ready to forgive all of our sins. Wow, isn't it amazing to think that even as Jesus was dying on the cross, he still was forgiving people? He forgave the thief's sins. That's amazing to me because he loves us so much. You know, 
Bible says that we all have sinned. Romans 3.23 says, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And that's really sad because a sin is anything we think, say, or do that breaks God's law or makes him sad. And we may think sometimes, oh, well, I'm not a thief. I haven't stolen things. I'm not that bad. But the truth is, it's not like there are big sins and little sins. Anything that goes against what God says we need to do is a sin. So let's think of some different sins that the Bible points out that shows us are the wrong things to do. Well, we remember that the thief on the cross, he had stolen things. So we could write down stealing. Maybe you're not tempted to go into someone's house and take what doesn't belong to you, but maybe there's some other sins that you have committed, like disobedience. Like whenever your mom or dad tells you to do something and you think to yourself, I don't wanna do that. And you decide to do the exact opposite of what they said. That's disobedience and that's a sin. Let's write that down. And then there are other things that are sins, like the Ten Commandments tell us that lying is a sin. Or even something like having a bad attitude or being selfish. Like when you say, I want my way and I don't care about my friends. That's not very nice. So I wrote down selfishness too. And here's the beautiful thing about God's love. If we have all these sins in our heart, Jesus chooses to forgive us of these sins. If we see we are sorry and we believe in his name. So it's not a matter of whether we think these sins are big or little. Jesus can still forgive them. And whenever he forgives our sins, it's like he erases them. And he doesn't hold them against us anymore. He won't say, he won't remind us of these different things that we've done. I'm so glad that whether we are five years old or 65 or any other age, Jesus will forgive our sins. No matter how much money we have, he will forgive our sins. It's not a matter of how much we have in possessions or what age we are or what sins we've committed. The Bible tells us that Jesus will always forgive our sins if we are sorry for them and we believe on his name. I'm so thankful for that truth today. I'm so glad that God's grace is big enough for everyone. Let's pray together. Dear God, I thank you for this Palm Sunday. We thank you for who you are and how you love us so much. Thank you for coming to earth because you care about us so much. Thank you for dying on the cross for our sins. And thank you for becoming alive again. We love Easter so much and we love you. Thank you for forgiving us of any sins that we are sorry for. We know that you are faithful and just to forgive us of those sins. We love you. In Jesus' name.
Hey boys and girls, we're so excited to invite you to a special event at Hope Sound Bible Church. We know that things are a little bit different due to COVID-19, and so we want to have an Easter egg hunt still, but we want to do it in a way that's safe for you. So we're inviting you to come to Hope Sound Bible Church on April the 11th from 3.30 to 5.30 p.m. You can come any time in there. You and your family will stay in your vehicle the whole time. We're going to hide eggs all around the outside of Hubsound Bible Church. And you will have a map. You'll have to mark all of the eggs that you find. We'll give you that map when you arrive. We'll just hand it to you through the window. You'll drive around our parking lot and exit out of the north end of our parking lot where we'll have a special treat bag for each of you that will pass to you in your car. And then you'll give us back your map and we'll count up how many eggs you found and we'll give a prize to the first, second, and third place winner. So you're gonna to want to be a part because these are pretty exciting big prizes. We hope to see you there. We're excited to celebrate Easter with you. Once again, that's April 11th, and you should come between 3.30 and 5.30 p.m. Make sure that you stay in your car, so don't walk to the church. Stay in your car, and you'll drive around Hobestown Bible Church. We're excited to see you. Boys and girls, we are so excited to invite you to an amazing adventure. You, yes, you, I know have amazing talents that are maybe talents you've never even shared with anyone. We wanna give you the chance to be a part of a Hope Sound Bible Church Kids Talent Show. Now maybe you're thinking to yourself, well, I'm not always a member of Hope Sound Bible Church. That's okay, if you've been watching our services, we would love for you to share your talent with us. So grab your video camera or mom and dad's cell phone and show us your talent. All talents are going to be shown the week after Easter. So you have about two weeks to prepare and practice for your talent and then you'll get to share it with us. Well, today I did something that made me a little bit nervous. I shared a little bit of one of my talents that needs a lot of work. Maybe I'll have to practice and be able to share my talent with you a little later. We hope you have fun, boys and girls. Work hard, practice, come up with funny things, come up with silly things, come up with serious things. Whatever you would like to do, we'll take one entry from each person. We're so excited to see your amazing talents. Just a few more pieces of information for you for the talent show. All of your talents need to be into us the Wednesday before the talent show. So that will be April the 15th. By April the 15th, you need to have all of your videos of your talents sent to us. And we're going to put them all together in a long video. Um, and we'll post it on Sunday, April the 19th. So that's going to, we'll have our main children's service. And then we'll also have the talent show for you on April the 19th. We're so excited. Practice, practice, practice. We can't wait to see your talent. 